Ilnara Azanova and her children spend their days living without power. Much of the electricity in their Crimean town has been sabotaged, not by the Russians who annexed their homeland two years ago, but by unknown attackers who left Crimean Tatar flags tied to the power station infrastructure. Asanova's family is like many Muslim Tatars in Crimea, weary of the atmosphere of mistrust and intimidation. Her husband has been jailed since last year for participating in an anti-Russian protest. He's an ordinary village guy. We have four children. He worked as a tractor driver. We worked the land and kept domestic animals. That's what we were living on. Growing frustrations with life under the Russians has led to a growing resistance on the border. It's led by Lenur Islyamov, the owner of a Crimean Tatar TV channel. He's working from Kiev to set up a 500-strong battalion. He feels continued repression will act as a recruiting tool. When a moment comes and someone offends their girlfriend, when someone comes to their home to search it and punches their mother, they will be humiliated themselves. Then this personal war will begin for them. Russian President Vladimir Putin says the annexation of Crimea is a historic achievement. But border blockades and power outages have put a big hole in the Kremlin budget. Plunging oil prices have left Moscow little to spare for shoring up the territory. The Tatars in Crimea have a long history of repression. In 1944, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin shipped 200,000 of them to Central Asia after suspecting they were collaborating with the Nazis. Thousands died. Today, many Tatars say living without power is just an inconvenience compared to the oppression they suffered in the past. Luke Sheridan, The Associated Press.